Hello, this is Mitch from the shop again. This is a short uh, little video on the amount of hollow that is ground into the typical A5 blade, for instance, in relation to the dimension of the radius on the disc where you're working, and also how much a blade can be distorted from heat and pressure, and how that amount compares to the amount of dimensions we're talking as far as the amount of radius on the wheel and how it all ties together as uh, elements of the overall result you get when you grind a blade. Now you may have seen the video on the shape of the disc and how this plane is straight and it's curved this way and yet when you grind a blade you may get a crescent pattern and this will hopefully help explain that. So what I'm going to do is zero out this little gauge on a flat surface to zero and then I'm going to check the radius surface of the disc. So I've got it on zero and these are in tenths of a thousandth so from zero to one is one thousandth. Now I have a raised one inch span and that's the distance I'm going to be measuring the crown or the radius on the surface of the disc. So I've drawn a center line across the disc and I'll place the indicator point in the center of the band and on the center line of the wheel. see that it's about one and a half tenths, two tenths almost, in the center of the band. I'll go towards the inner radius of the band. It's a healthy two and a half or so. And on the outer edge down to about one, over one. So that's the, the, the dimensions we're talking in regards to the amount of the crown on a standard wheel cut for your, your standard A5s. What I'll show here is how much the blades flex from pressure and how much they distort from the grinding heat and the dimension of that and so you can see how that correlates to the amount of dimension we just saw on the radius of the wheel. I'll take, take a uh, standard A5 cutter here go across these two bars. There again this indicator is one one thousandth of an inch between the numbers so each increment is a tenth of a thousandth. I'll take a little thin screwdriver and I'll just push down right in the spring groove and see how much that blade flexes. And I'm not pushing that hard I'm probably pushing you know two three pounds something like that and it's flexing a good tenth get it all the way out to the end of the blade bends really easy you know, two, one and a half, two tenths, no problem and I push on my, my steel blocks, nothing moves nothing moves so it is just the, the flex of that blade now if I put the blade front to back so to speak and see how much the blade will actually flatten out in the direction of the hollow grind the normal front to back hollow grind there again you can see 
little bit of flex there. Good tenth or so. So the blades can be distorted while grinding from pressure. They can be distorted from pressure when you're doing your your rub test. You can flatten out the amount of hollow front to back and left to right. So where you have your fingers, how hard you're pushing is going to affect that. Now as we're sharpening and we're throwing sparks, which are more than a thousand degrees. Now the blade doesn't get a thousand degrees of course, but they're warm to the touch when they come off the wheel. I'll apply a little hot air with this heat gun, which is pretty hot air, but you know, I can have my hand in front of it and make sure uh, I'm in range here with my dial. So I'll just put a little heat on there. You see the dial need to move. And as the blade cools, it's coming back. Get it a little closer for you. You know it's not hot. You know I can put it right on my my, my bare skin here on my wrist, and it's not uncomfortable or anything. Get this down on my solid steel. You see, it's not just the, the dial heating up or or anything. It was the actual clipper blade moving. Put a thicker blade on there. That one's a pretty thin one. So there's flex on the thicker one. And do a hot air to it. heat the blade up with more direct heat source get right underneath it more like the grinding action is And if the heat goes away, the blade normalizes. You may notice the dial is moving counterclockwise, which means the blade, the top of the blade, is going away from the indicator, going down means the bottom of the blade is going down also in the center more than the edges so while you're grinding you're grinding the center of the blade more as it gets hot and especially if you're pushing right in the center so that is going to grind more out of the center of the blade resulting in a crescent pattern a bowl shaped hollow even though you're on a straight plane on the wheel. So that hopefully will explain the crescent pattern and the bowl shaped hollow and how it's created due to the heat and the pressure while grinding.